Hello Internet, Magic Man here from MMOBomb.com bringing you another first look video. This, for, this time it's for Legends of Runeterra, the card game brought to you by Riot Games taking place in the League of Legends universe. We're going to spend about 15-20 minutes or so checking the game out, giving you the details. Now the game just went into open beta uh, today, January 24th. If you pre-registered, you've been able to access it for a day. You got access on the 20th. Third, So, uh, I have that access. We're going to jump in right to a game right away just to check it out first, give you an idea of the board and everything before we come back and go into the menus, deck creation, monetization, and all of those other details. And we'll just queue up. Uh, we'll queue up versus an AI. That way it can go real quick. We don't have to wait for anybody to make some decisions. That is not the deck I want. That is my sample deck that I'll be using when we talk about creation and limitations. If you're a uh, trading card game or collecting card game connoisseur, a lot of this is going to be very familiar to you. Again, uh, probably a lot of words will be the, the only real differences. Uh, instead of trample, you'll have this. Instead of uh, first strike, you'll have uh, this other term. Uh, actually, I am going to just replace the one. So a mulligan, you can replace any of the cards in your hand. I'll be acting first. Now, as far as the layout, the board we're playing on, this is a cosmetic item you can buy. Your little avatar guys in the corner, those are cosmetics. So you'll be able to uh, purchase quite a bit on the cosmetic front. Again, we'll get to that when we jump into the store. All right. So right now, it's my opponent's turn. They're going to their attack phase, and they are just swarming all over me very quickly. So, as you can see, pretty quick, fast-moving game, especially when you didn't have, or I didn't in this case, have... I'm not getting any cards I could actually play. Uh, so, it's pretty much auto-playing my turn, and I'm just getting blasted here. <laughs> I am literally getting spiders formed. Hey, I can actually do something. Now that it's slowed down for a second, let's talk about resources. Each turn, you will gain your resources right here. And right here for the opponent, uh, you will gain one additional per turn. The three that you see at the bottom are specifically for spells. These are spell mana. So if you have mana left over at the end of a turn, it will then fall into your spell mana. And those can only be used for casting things like spells, uh, whether they be fast, uh, slow, or uh, what is that? the other one? Blast, I think, off the top of my head. What is it? Do I have one? I don't. I'm pretty pretty sure it's Blast. Um, yeah, we'll just say it's Blast. So right now, I could cast Black Spear. Wouldn't do me any good because I didn't have any allies die this round. But it wouldn't take away from my four core mana. It would take away from three of my spell mana first. And then, if it needed to dip into my core mana, it would. But now I can actually get some cards out here. Uh, unfortunately, I can play this. But it's in play effect, it's enter the battlefield effect, which is what play is in this game, isn't going to do anything because I don't have an ally to target and kill. As far as the zones, you play units in this blue area here. When they're attacking or defending, you'll pull them out onto the green field, uh, and then they will jump back to this area in blue at the end of that turn. I do have to kind of stop the damage a little bit, so even though I don't get a, a decent enter the battlefield effect, we're going to put somebody out. Once you... Oh, great, and he's going to get stunned, which means he can't attack or block this turn. Notice this token right here. This is the attack token. It shows who can be attacking this turn. So uh, each game is played in rounds, and on typical, typically uh, in rounds, only one player can attack. This time it's my opponent. This token will flip to my side. Now I say typically because there are commands in this game like rally, which would let me generate an attack token, and I could attack in that same round. If we go 40 rounds and there is no winner at that point, nobody's taken either Nexus down to zero, then the match will be declared a draw. I don't have a response, which is what the game is waiting for right now. This is on the stack, getting ready to stun my creature. Clicking uh, right click on the card will give you a close up view of it. And that also gives you the opportunity to mouse over anything. So you can see that slow spells 
can be used outside of combat and other casting. The enemy does get a chance to respond to those types of things, those slow spells. Uh, quick and I, th I think it's burst. Is it, is it burst? I don't remember. We'll see. Um, those can be used inside of combat. Uh, so that being the difference, if you're familiar with magic, the gathering and instant versus sorcery and some limitations on when you can cast those, you've got similar limitations going on here. I don't have a response to this, so we're just going to let it go through, which means I'm going to eat all of this damage. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've got three spell mana, but an ally didn't die. An ally, I can kill an ally to draw two. Um... I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this. It has a zero cost, and I have to kill an ally to do it. But that will at least give me a 3-2 that can block and kind of negates their stun. Haste is not a thing. You can attack the turn you bring a character into the blue bar, as long as it doesn't have any limitations of its own uh, abilities doing that. Now, I need to... I'm going to block here. Because what's going to happen, this is a champion card. Uh, and based on its text, you can see that if they, at the start of a round, they have three or more spiders on the board, uh, it will level up. Which means it'll gain strength, it'll gain defense. The numbers going through the cards, upper left-hand corner, casting cost. Lower left-hand corner, the like orangish yellow two is the amount of damage it will deal, its power. Lower right-hand corner is its health, the amount of damage it can take before it dies. There is no regeneration between turns unless a card specifically has the regeneration keyword. Now, since I can declare the block here, fearsome really does not apply to me because I can, I have a creature that is three or more power, so I am able to block. But I don't want that champion to level up by him throwing one spider out and meeting the terms. Now, the benefit I do have is that it might not... Oh, they already have a, a Rakdon Horror Spider, so they already meet this qualifier. They've got one, two, three spiders. I don't want this to level up, so I'm going to put my block there. I'm going to lose this uh, Ravenous Butcher but it will keep their champion from leveling up. I just got wrecked the way this game started. Now, I did have an ally die this round, so I'm gonna use this slow spell, so they do have a chance to respond. If they do, their spell will pop here, and they'll keep going to the left, and then, similar to other games, the stack resolves in the opposite order, so they'll start placing them to the left, and then it will resolve from left to right. So this is going to give me two Spiderlings of my own. Notice they have no attack icon because that's already done. They they had another champion already. That's not good. Uh, I might be able to get rid of that, though. Let's go ahead. I do have two spell mana left over. An ally did die this round, which is kind of what the deck I've built here is, is made on. Um, capitalizing on allies dying. We're going to get that champion off the board. Now, they can only have at most three of those champion, that particular champion, in their deck. So we've just gotten rid of two of them, which is a, a very good thing. All right, so we draw a card for a turn. We start to take a look at what's going on here. I could capture a unit, kill an ally to draw two. If an ally died, deal three to an uh, uh, enemy unit. If three allies died this round, I can summon Vile Maw. When cards reference other cards, if you right-click to get the zoomed-in view, it will show the other cards in the background that are referenced. In this case, Vile Maw is shown in the background, so I could s you see that's a 6-6 six, six creature. Uh, what do we want to do? I don't... Uh, I th think what we want to do, because Fearsome, I can't block this, this, or this currently. Because I need something with three or more power. And that's three, four, five damage to my Nexus. I only have nine left. I really don't want to capture a unit on a 1-1 one, one creature. Because it's, on th this type of effect, you capture one of their units that's played. And it's trapped by one of your units. But if that your unit leaves the board, it's killed or whatever. Then they get their unit back. And so with two 1-1s one, out, that really doesn't... So I'm going to have to actually kill one of my spiderlings here and get two cards. Because I've been really not drawing well when we saw the first two and a half rounds go by. Drain one. Oh, so there, there's perfect. They used their uh, item, their spell to respond, killing my creature. Since it resolved left to right, 
uh, on the stack. I did not get to draw two cards because my target was gone at that point. I just got mowed. All right, so we're going to have to put out that. That's fine. I get to draw uh, a unit because I, my spider, my 1-1 one, one spider, did die. This does give me somebody that can block this 3-2. So we're going to go ahead and end the round there. I'm not going to attack. I don't want to get into a trade. We've got another butcher that we can play by killing an ally. Um, let's block here and let's block. I, I can't block here. Right. So let's block here. We'll just trade spiders. See if we can't crawl our way back into this. We have hand advantage, but man, did we get swamped at the beginning of this game in the first three rounds. That was not pretty. Uh, we did have an ally die, so we'll go ahead and draw, play this and draw another unit. You do get your mana each turn, so not just on your turn, but on the enemy's turn. So it's all a balancing game of do you want to use it now and be prepped for your turn when, you, when it comes back? Would you rather these three resource manas fall into spell mana? Um, man, that seems, that seems like a bit, bit of overkill there. Giving somebody three. Now, let's go ahead and play another one. We'll just keep drawing units. <laughs> Deck sizes are 40 cards. Play sets are three of each card. Uh, and you can only build decks of up to two regions. That'll make sense in, in a little bit when we get to the deck building portion here. All right. So now I've got my champion, and this is the only champion I have in my deck. It doesn't mean that it's the only champion you'll have in yours is one champion. You can run multi-champion decks as long as the, you stay inside the rules as far as two nations being represented in your deck. But for my particular deck, this is the only one that I'm running. So I'm going to, I've got seven right now, and I've got kill an ally, then revive it. Um... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to kill one of these and revive it. That will mean everything in my hand that is requiring an ally to die this turn is online. So you can and it's keeping track of this turn. One of three allies have died, so can't summon Vile Maw with that yet. Uh, but that does mean I can play. I'm going to put this guy out. Hapless Aristocrat. Last Breath is on death. Again, if you're familiar with card games, you're probably picking up a lot of this pretty quickly. If you're not familiar with card games, one or two rounds and then a playthrough of the tutorial area uh, scenarios, you'll it'll teach you all the keywords and combos and everything. Uh, so Last Breath is on death. Uh, summons a 1-1 one, one Spiderling. Uh, now I'm going to drop Ravenous Butcher for no cost, killing my 1-1, one, one, who has a death effect. And that'll give me a Spiderling. Notice my bar is kind of filling up here. I've got a bunch of characters. You can have at most six characters in this bar at one time. Uh, they went ahead and put a 2-2 two, two out. We've, they also have a Hapless Aristocrat. But we're going to go ahead and take that 2-2 two, two out since we're capitalizing on some allies dying in this particular deck. Credit, by the way, to some friends of mine at RVA Returners, the uh, Final Fantasy TCG group. Uh, the deck I'm playing is similar to one they've built. I think I've changed four or five cards just for personal flavor, uh, but it's definitely my, my type of play style. Uh, I think at this point we just go ahead and launch an all-out attack. Now notice, when I'm picking these up and putting them on the board, the most recent addition goes to the right, okay? So let's go back. And so my 3-3, three, three. now I take the Chronicler of Ruin, and it doesn't matter if I you know, even put it way over here, it's gonna go here, uh, to the right. And they will attack in order from left to right, one at a time. You declare your full tack, they declare their full blocks, and then bang, bang, bang down the line from left to right. So you can really use that to your advantage with other abilities. Um, whether, you know, you can put a champion down here. There's a champion that uh, levels up when the opponent's nexus is at 10 or less health. Well, if you can hit it, hit it, hit it with your first three attacks uh, and put it at 10, he will level right before he attacks. So you can take advantage of the attacking order just like you could take advantage of the spell uh, stack order resolving from left to right. 
Uh, so you can also click drag and it picks everybody up and it sets them all down there in order as well. Yeah, we're just gonna full out attack. I don't think they wanna eat this damage. So we're gonna take a bunch of one ones out. Our spiderlings will trade on the end. No action can be taken there by me. I have no resources left. And slowly we start to creep back into this. Not a great start to the game based on the way we drew lots of spells. Not much we could have done there. Curse Keeper can't block, but gets an escaped abomination onto the field when it dies. So we'll probably be killing that. What are you doing? Oh, you're stunning my 3-1. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Um, how do I, do I want to respond to that? Yes, actually, I do. I'm going to use this and capture your 3-2. Whoops, got to target my ally first. And I'm going to put him behind the stunned character because the stunned character will not be able to block or attack this turn. So they're going to have to use something from their hand if they want to get their 3-2 arachnoid sentry back. And with, they've got plenty of resources. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to pass and let you go to your attack. All right, fearsome, so we'll put you there, and we will put you there. And block. You had to have an answer there. That was like a bait. A drain four from an ally unit. So this is going to kill. Drain takes the health away from the target and gives it to the Nexus. But now we're in a really good spot. We've got four units out, three cards in hand to their one card in hand, no units out, and the turn is ours. Although we're running risky down here, uh, we are we are doing we're doing pretty well. All right, so I'm going to put my curse keeper out. Now he can't block, and he's only one one. But on death, he gets that escaped uh, abomination, who's four four. So we're gonna go ahead and cast Glimpse Beyond to kill my own ally and draw two. That'll get rid of our Cursed Keeper and bring out an Abomination. They're draining three from a unit, so that'll kill my Chronicler of Ruin and give their Nexus three. Notice it's not doing anything. Can't go above 20. They're at max life. So I did get my Escaped Abomination out. I got to draw two cards. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't really have much. Actually, yeah, we can do this. So we're going to put Chronicler of Ruin out. This is going to kill an ally, then revive it. And I'm going to do it to this 3-1 so that it will revive at 3-3, full health. And now we have the qualifier for fresh offerings to bring Vile Maw onto the field. And I do have one more spot to put a character. That only worked because we killed and revived this Vanguard Redeemer here. And now we go ape shit. We pick them all up, we put them all out. And we attack. And there we go. A game that, wow, at the beginning I thought there was no way in hell. I thought this was going to be a short game. As far as demos go, we end up taking the victory. Made some uh, daily quest progress. Got some experience. Going towards my Shadow Isles progress. We'll talk about that in a moment. And my Vault progress. We'll also get to that in just a second. All right. So as far as ways to play, once you log in, you'll notice that you can... Select a player icon. Let's go ahead and pick a new one. We'll go, do we have our, our my, my spider lady? Where is she? Uh, we'll just go with the spider, that's fine. Uh, we have our in our in-game currency, which is the shards. I have 19 right now. This is the cash shop currency. I did purchase this uh, currency with actual cash. I wasn't given it for the sake of this first look video. I wanted to be able to buy a few things and show you things as we go through. We have our quests. Those come in a daily variety, and you get wins for PvP wins. Uh, I think the first one was 400 XP. Um, and then I think it's 200 after that. The bonuses refresh daily, uh, making a little progress on some of my daily quests. 
the weekly vault is a leveling process that pays out every Tuesday. So you can see I'm level four, 350 to 1000 on my way to level five. And on Tuesday, I'll be able to unlock the corresponding vault chests based on my progress there. So at the end of the match, I gained experience both for my weekly vault and any for my daily quests. Now, let's go to rewards since we're talking about those. The way the game works as far as progression and collection acquiring works is by playing the game. Uh, it is free to play, obviously, or we wouldn't be talking about it here. And Riot Games specifically said they don't want you to be able to buy card packs, uh, randomized card packs. So, the, But they also wanted to limit the acquisition of cards uh, over time so that you didn't just boom purchase an expansion to have the full set available to you down the road. The way they've done that is through these almost these little story progress things. Right now, I'm working on the Shadow Isles, but when you start, you will be doing the prologue. It won't say Shadow Isles, it'll say prologue. Now, I've gone through and done all of them. You get a bunch of rewards as you go through and beat each one, and each one teaches you something about the game, whether it's about uh, different keywords, whether it's about combos, whether it's about when you can respond, uh, all of that. those basic uh, items you're going to need to play will be covered in the prologue. Once you've beaten the entire all the prologue missions, you'll probably be one, maybe two levels away from finishing the prologue section here. Uh, and unlocking the last two rewards, you can go ahead and polish that experience off, just like you saw by playing the AI or playing versus player uh, other players. Once you finish the prologue, you actually start making progress in each of the regions. And a good way to think about these for uh, card game players is your elements, right? Uh, your your earth, your fire, water, swamps, whatever, whatever game you're playing. I just mixed two or three games there. Those are basically your elements. And you have all the regions to make progress in and 20 levels of progress in each of them currently. Right now, I've started with Shadow Isles because that has my, my current favorite champion in there. So I've gotten to unlock a capsule that had a couple cards and shards in it. I think I got shards because the cards I had that, that awarded there, I already owned three of. Uh, I got a rare wild card. Next up will be the bronze chest, which will give us some additional cards. So you can work through 20 levels of this region. At any point, you can change to another region. So maybe you wanted to start playing with these cards. You would go ahead and start earning prizes unique to that particular region. So you can go ahead and cater what your your play your current active uh, storyline is if you will to whichever decks you're trying to get the most cards for because that caters to your play style speaking of the collection we've got our collections tab which gives us both decks cards boards and guardians boards and guardians are cosmetic they can only be purchased with cash shop currency as far as conversion i don't really need to click on the store for you it's basically a penny a point with some discounts here and there if you buy more and more so a good rule of thumb is when you're looking at these Right now, you saw us play on the Summoner's Rift. If we wanted to play on Iceborne Peak, that would basically cost me $9.90. I'll go ahead and buy that just so that we can watch that. And then I'm going to go ahead and equip that. Guardians are the same thing. Those are your little guys in the, the corner that you can kind of interact with and emote with throughout the game. I did buy T-Hex because he's awesome. Uh, and went ahead and, and equipped him. On the cards front, now, you cannot buy cards per se. You're not going to be buying packs of cards. We already talked about that. But what you can do is in the store, you have the ability to purchase wild cards. Champions, epic, rare, and common. Now, you're limited, though, on these per week. So on the common wild cards, you can only buy six per week. Now, you'll notice I went through and bought, with the, the coins that I put on here, I went through and bought a bunch for the sake of this first look video so that I could put a couple cards in my deck that I wanted to start messing around with, but then also have some of these available for the first look video. These reset weekly. 
So I've still got three days and 14 hours until the next weekly refresh of wild cards, which means, yes, I can buy cards in quotes. Like I can get six wild cards. I think it was six rares, three epics, and three champions, something like that. Um, but uh, I can only do that six, six, three, and three, and then I'm done for the rest of the week. I can earn more wild cards through gameplay, uh, but I can't buy any more. I can use wild cards in the collection to simply just unlock whatever I want. So let's go look at champions, for instance. Um, and let's look at the regions I'm playing in my deck right now. We'll look at those two. Now, I already have Elise, and I have three copies of her. So I don't want to uh, to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll get Lux. By right-clicking on Lux, you can see that I can use a wild card to purchase this or shards, which are earned through gameplay. So yes, you can buy cards, a few, every single week, uh, but you can also get them through gameplay with shards, which are rewarded to you in various uh, rewards packages that you saw in the regions and also through uh, gameplay itself. Let's go ahead and we'll buy Lux. There we go. Yay, we've got two copies of Lux right now, one copy of Garen. In the deck builder area, you'll have some starting decks that you earn once you've completed your initial tutorials. Uh, this was the deck that you saw me just play that kind of capitalizes on uh, elimination of allies. Uh, let's go into this new deck and edit it. You'll notice that it had a big ass exclamation point on it because it is not complete yet and so therefore it cannot be queued up in any of the playable arenas. Now right now, here's the limitations. 40 total cards, 6 champions. Now remember, let's whoop, no, let's get rid of these. Remember what I said, looking at a card you can see its region. This was from Shadow Isle, so I can I can add that to my deck. Now I've got Jinx here, who's a totally different uh, region, but I can add that. And since I have six spots for champions, I could go ahead, I don't have three of Jinx yet, apparently I only have two, I could you know, make them three and three and carry that. Uh, but the minute I try to add a champion from, did I not select, I selected champion, didn't I? Thought I did. That's the only two I have, so show unowned. Uh, the minute I try and add one from another region, you can only add cards from two different regions to a deck. So really, you're looking at mono or duo decks right now. Uh, as far as your, quote, colors go. Now, this that rule applies not just on champions, but on everything else as well. Decks are broken down by champions, units, and spells. Uh, and you can have 40 total cards, three copies of any given card in your deck. Now that we've seen... We can just discard this one. Now that we've seen that, let's go and show you a completed deck here. There's still some changes I want to make to this, but we'll we'll see. I've been playing with it just since yesterday. So uh, I'm running three champions, 40 total cards. If you look at the breakdown here, three champs, 24 units, 16 spells. Uh, and again, you saw a lot of that capitalizing on getting rid of your own allies or taking advantage of your allies dying. Keywords, regeneration, heals fully at the start of the round. Barrier negates the next damage done to it. Burst, that's what it was. Burst spells resolve instantly. The enemy can't act before it finishes. So you have those three levels, uh, slow, fast, and burst, that have varying usage points uh, during your opponent's turn and your own turn, like you can't use slow during combat. Fast and burst also have their own various response times as far as your opponent being able to do something over the top like you saw happen in our game. Let's go back. We're going to jump into another game here, and then we'll call it a first look. I'm going to continue to use my deck. Oh, I didn't mean to pick AI. I wanted to pick versus player here. Oh, Expeditions. I guess I should talk about that too. Uh, that's your draft. Um, I did. I do have one draft token that I earned through gameplay. There is currently no other way to get them that I've seen. The only thing in the store are those wild cards and this starter bundle that you can buy for like $5 that just gives you 66 different cards to add to your collection. So the only way to get into Expeditions, at least right now, is with the token. 
Um, oh, okay, apparently not. So I can use my token, which I earned through gameplay, but I could pay straight cash, homie, or I could use shards, and this is our draft format version. But let's go to just a regular PvP match. Use my deck. Well, normal, you notice uh, ranked was available there too uh, to click on. I have not played a ranked match yet, so I don't know if it's actually available and what the season length is uh, since this is open beta, but that's fine. Now look at this. So somebody's using four different champions in this deck. Still two regions, but four different champions. So there's going to be a lot going on there. Uh, actually, that's not too bad, but I don't have any zeros or ones. So we're going to get rid of a four. I'm going to keep the Vanguard Redeemer. Get a zero or a one drop. Ah, two drop. At least I have characters this time, for God's sakes. Last time, that was... Okay, we drew a one drop. Nice. Wow, they passed. Uh, all right, we'll go ahead and put that. Notice the board halves are different. We've got my Ice Lands and... Their summoner rift in the top. I should have swung there. Yeah, haste is not something you have to worry about there. Uh, so I, I absolutely had the ability to swing there. So I'm going to put Elise on the field. And let them do... What are they doing? Up oh, 2-2, two, two, and they're going to get a 1-1. One, one. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. I want to swing because at least we'll spawn a spiderling upon attack. But, yeah, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to force you to to put those up on the line if you if you don't want to uh, if you want if you don't want to take damage. So, all right, so we're going to trade here. That's okay. I'll get us one one spiderling off of that, and that that's perfect actually. Thank you. Oh yeah, I kind of thought you might rethink that. Kind of thought you might rethink that. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> it's still, you know, still kind of the net same ending, but makes it makes a little bit better. Not much though, not much. All right, so we're off to an okay start here. Ah, uh, my, I've got my Dawn speakers. That's awesome. So if I can get this Spiderling nuked into com in combat here, and then just drop this, everything will gain plus one plus one. I'm not going to drop that yet. I'm going to pass and see what you're going to attack with. Are you going to bum rush me with all these spiders? Oh, Brother's Bond. Grant two allies. What was Oh, plus two, plus zero. All right. Well, we're going to go here. I'll gladly trade you a 1-1 one, one for a 4-4 four, four that brings my Dawn Speakers online. Uh, and then we're going to go here, too. And... Or should I go here? Uh, no, I don't... Is that till end of turn? Or is that perm? Oh, I don't know. That's forever. Two allies, 2-0. Two oh. Hmm. I'm running out of time. Uh, y you know what? I have two more Elise in deck, and I don't have a lot of spiders online. I'm going to take the trade. But now I have no other allies out here, <laughs> so Dawn Speakers doesn't make sense. But we can drop our Vanguard Redeemer and draw a unit since we had allies die. Would have been real nice to pick up at least there again, but didn't didn't pan out that way. Chronicler of Ruin will be good though. All right, so I don't have any spell uh, mana, so I've got to deal with just the four mana I have. Um. Mm -mm -mm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up... It's really tempting to put out the Chronicler of Ruin and nuke this uh, just for a, a free little foreplay. But that... Does, ha! Foreplay. But that's... You know, they're full health. I'd rather not do that. Uh, I'd rather put out the Cursed Keeper that can't block. That gives us the escaped abomination at the when they uh, leave the field. And then set up for next turn, my opponent's turn, attack turn, to drop Chronicler of Ruin. Oh, play or strike, create a spinning axe in hand. To play discard one, gives an ally plus one, plus O. Oh. I've struck it twice with the spinning axes. Draven's level up, uh, Draven, whatever is a level up ability. Um, yeah, I don't think, are we going to do anything? Nah, we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll go ahead and drain one. 
That'll take this spider away, put my nexus back at 20, and we'll get a spiderling out of the deal. Oh, what are you thinking about, buddy? Did you have a response there that you might wanted to do? I don't know. I haven't seen anything that, like, straight cancels yet. I think I'll go ahead and pass, too. I have the attack icon, so I want to see what they do. There we go. All right, now we've got five to go with. Ooh, our helpless aristocrat. That would be nice. Kill that and revive that. All right, what are you doing over here? You got five cards in hand. Okay, I still got my Dawn Speakers. Got my Chronicler of Ruin. Got my hapless aristocrat. I've, I still have my Cursed Keeper who can't block. There goes Spinning Axe. Now we're cooking. Good ability, but they end up discarding a lot. Oh, and they got a hapless aristocrat out now, too. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to Chronicler Ruin, take out my Cursed Keeper, and get the Abomination on the board, and then revive the Cursed Keeper. Pretty nice little loop there. I still have one left over, so I could put out the helpless aristocrat. But we're going to combat first. What do you have? You've got a lot going on. Quick attack. That's basically first strike when attacking. So it strikes before the blocker. Uh, and they're going to get a spinning axe in hand off of that, too. Ugh. Well, I don't think I'm going to be blocking that anytime soon. So we're going to put... Oh, why can't you block? Because yeah, that's your feature. You can't block. Way to go. All right. So I think we'll go... We'll go here. And here we'll give you your spiderling. Because you've just got one card in hand. Things are... Seven damage is a lot of freaking damage to be taken there. But... But I think it's the better play. Um, I have one left. We'll put the aristocrat out. What's that noise? Uh, they have two cards in hand, but I know one of them's a spinning axe. They still have one one mana left. Let's see what they do with it. Are they just gonna let it become spell mana? Let's tickle the. Yay! Oh, come on, shoot me with the. There you go. If you keep clicking on them, they do little emote things. Kill an ally, draw two. Drain one. All right. I really want to get something to take this out here. So I'm going to kill this ally to draw two and get my escaped abomination. Hopefully, I draw the... I forget what it's called, but it's uh, if an ally's died, deal three damage to something. That would be very, very nice if to, to draw off the top right now. More Dawn Speakers. Oh, more Spiderlings. Boy, we're just draining one left and right. Well, I do have four. How many creatures do I have out? Four. So, okay. Here's what we're going to do. On my turn... Oh. Grant other spider allies two. So that... 2-0. That'll go up there. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that. Thanks for being three, but... Because you're only one, we'll take you out. I'm going to do... I want that one to go off by itself. Because I want to see if my opponent has an answer to that. Because I'm going to follow up with a second one. Do I really need to? No, I don't really need to, actually. Because everything will trade or kill. Because he only gets that quick attack when attacking, not when blocking. Um, yeah, so, we'll no, we'll go ahead. And we're, we're going to come at you and see what you do. Because you're, you're running out of time, friend. So you're going to trade there. He'll kill there. He does have that axe. He's already he, he might get that. He might fire off that axe and level up. We'll see. I'm going to take a chance and pass. All oh, these spinning axes. Oh, and I don't have the What what, what are you doing here? Oh yeah. There we go. Spinning axe. 
One card in hand. I don't think I can do anything. Ugh. Ugh. Tragic. I really wanted one more mana so I could throw Dawn Speakers out. That would have been nice. I, I think we're still okay here. I think we're I think we're in good shape. Because if you actually attack with this, I'm just going to truck something in front of it. What was that? Can't block. Last breath. Revive me at the start of the round. Grant me plus one, plus one for each time I've died. Pretty nifty card. Um, yes. I'm going to drain one from you and give that to my... Um, or uh, give that to my Nexus and get a Spiderling on the field. Because then that means that he becomes a 3-1 and trades with my little hapless aristocrat if I decide to block there. Oh, no, he won't because of Quick Attack. Almost forgot about Quick Attack, but I don't think he's going to be swinging. Overwhelm, uh, so that is Trample. Uh, any damage that doesn't get blocked is going to go through and hit the Nexus. Ugh. All right, so we're going to go here. You know what? No, you don't have a hand. I want these things dead. And we'll spawn a Spiderling. You don't have an answer to anything, so... If I can clear things, I might as well clear them. And I got more spiders out of the deal, so. Uh, now we're going to put a Dawn Speakers out. Everything will get plus one, plus one at the end of turn. Two consecutive passes ends the round. I think we're in good shape here. He comes back a little, little stronger. That's fine. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't really see a reason not to just pressure. Let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, he gave up. Good point. Good call, brother. Good call. He didn't let me finish it. I was going to kill and revive at full health and swing away. But there you go. So now we've won a PvP match there. 200 experience for the match itself. 200 experience for the PvP bonus. All right, cool. We'll get to open a... Uh a Shadow Isles box but to end the first look. Let's take a look, though. What is the next PvP bonus? Is it... Yes, yeah, so it's going down uh, every single time. Um, I don't know how many PvP wins. I have two or three now, but it's going down every single time. Let's go to rewards. We're in the Shadow Isles. We get our bronze chest. Let's take a look. What's inside? Curse Keeper, extra copy, so I get shards, 60 shards, and Frenzied Skitterer, three drop for, that's 3-3. Three, three. When I'm summoned, give other allied spiders plus one, plus O, oh, and enemies, negative one, negative O oh, this round with Fearsome. Uh, fearsome means that they can't be blocked by anything that doesn't have at least three power. There are other keywords that uh, you can only block if they have the same keyword. You, you... Uh, other features that we didn't get to as far as the ways you can combo and build things. So if you want to check out Legends of Runeterra, open beta is set up now. Riot Games. Until next time, gang, this is Magic Man from MMO Bomb saying stay safe, and we'll see you on the servers.